As usual, Ramadan comes and goes very fast, as if it never started. And from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal and His favor upon His slaves is that He facilitates during this blessed month for them to perform different acts of worship and enables them to refrain from wrong deeds. Indeed, during this blessed month of Ramadan, we tasted the sweetness of faith. The sweetness of standing before Allah Azza wa Jal and weeping in humbleness and humility. We enjoyed going from one act of worship to the other. To the extent that some people, some of us, have reached a state of faith which they never experienced before in their lives to the point that they wished they would die upon such a state. The important question though, after few days of the end of Ramadan. It's been less than a week. Have we achieved the objective of Ramadan, of fasting? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who have believed, siyam, fasting, was made compulsory upon you like it was made upon those who were before you, perhaps that you may achieve taqwa. So have we achieved taqwa? And to answer this question, we must ask, answer the second question. What is the state of my heart now? What is the state of my faith now? Only a few days after the departure of Ramadan. There are signs with which one can find out whether or not he, ha he or she has achieved the objective of Siyam, has achieved Taqwa. Amongst which, is to continue upon acts of obedience and worship to Allah Azza wa Jal after Ramadan. Even if it was lesser in amount, even if it were, if it were few acts of worship that we used to do in Ramadan, to continue upon them, the hadith of Aisha, which is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. She said that the Prophet ﷺ said, The dearest of acts of worship to Allah are those that are continuous, even if they were few. And Allah Azza wa Jal, from His mercy, legislated for us, similar acts of worship that we did in Ramadan to be performed throughout the year, though lesser in amount, such as fasting. The hadith of Abu Huraira, which is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, my best friend, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in another narration, Abu Al-Qasim, instructed me not to leave three things. Fasting three days of every month. Praying the duha prayer. 
and to perform or pray the witter prayer before I sleep, lest he does not wake up before Fajr to pray it, so to be on the safe side. So fasting three days of every month is reducing Ramadan, but maintaining the same act of worship, which is fasting. Having said that, it is very recommended, highly recommended, for us to fast six days of this month, Shawwal, after the conclusion of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever fasts Ramadan and then adds six days of Shawwal, now of course after the day of Eid, because it's not allowed, it is as if he had fasted the entire year. Why so? Well, each deed is counted as 10 in reward. So 30 days is 300 and 6 days is 60. So that's 306. So it's as if he had fasted the entire year. So that's fasting. Taraweeh and tahajjud and qiyam al layl. Well, that's also recommended the entire year. Yes, we used to pray, some masajid used to pray an hour in Qiyam al-Layl. Others prayed two, others prayed three and four. Well, we're not going to ask for this. But let's maintain some of this. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim, the best prayer after the mandatory prayer, after the five daily prayers, is Qiyam al -Layl. So a believer, the believer is requested, is rather commanded to worship Allah Azza wa Jal until the last moment of his life. Allah Azza wa Jal instructed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ so worship your Lord until death comes to you. Al-Hasan al-Basri, Rahmatullah alayhi said, He said, Allah Azza wa Jal said death to be the time at which one can stop performing acts of worship. So this is sign number one of achieving piety, to check if we've achieved piety. Sign number two, to make sure that we do not turn back on our heels. The Prophet ﷺ used to warn the companions against this, against being on, upon worship, upon piety, upon obedience, and then stop. And then abandon that. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, and this is reported by al-Bukhari and Muslim, said that the Prophet ﷺ told me, O oh Abdullah, don't be like so and so. He used to pray Qiyam, but then he stopped. As a matter of fact, the Prophet ﷺ used to seek refuge in Allah from this. This is reported uh, by Muslim, Rahmatullahi Ali. He used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hawri ba'd al kawm. And in the narration of At Tirmidhi, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hawri ba'd al kawm. Both of which mean the same thing. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from deviation after guidance. From obedience, from disobedience, after obedience. From act, from abandoning acts of worship, after having maintained myself upon them. The worst slave to Allah is he or she who remembers Allah, who is mindful of Allah only during Ramadan. And with the announcement of Eid, things differ, things change. The state, it is as if he turned the on knob to off. 
and things go back to the state they were before Ramadan and even worse. Those who come to the masjid during Ramadan, only during Ramadan, they stop. Those who gave up smoking, they resume. Sisters who refrain from adorning themselves whilst outside in front of men, go back to abandoning hijab. It is as if Allah Azza wa Jal only exists in Ramadan. So making sure that we don't turn back on our heels confirms to us that we've achieved piety. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. وبعد the main concern one should have. After the end of Ramadan, is whether or not his or her deeds were accepted by Allah. Ali ibn Abi Talib used to say, radiallahu anhu, one should be more concerned about the acceptance of the deed than the actual performance of the deed. Because you can be enabled by Allah Azza wa Jal. Due to the environment, everybody around you is fasting, everybody around you is mentioning Allah, is reciting Quran, is sitting in the masjid, going to the masjid, right? The, the size of the congregation enlarges a lot during Ramadan. So some people get motivated and encouraged because of that environment, right? So the performance of the deed itself is good, but it's not, it should not be the main concern. The main concern should be whether or not that deed was accepted. And then he said, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ used to supplicate Allah six months to make them live long enough to reach Ramadan. And then after the conclusion of Ramadan, after Ramadan ends, they would supplicate Allah six months, asking Him to accept their deeds. Six months. So their lives revolved upon or around the performance and the deed and the acceptance of the deed. Signs telling me that inshallah my deeds were accepted is to have that fear in me that my deeds might have been rejected for whatever shortcoming I might have had. Another sign is one of the signs of achieving piety is to continue. Another sign which is very important is to enjoy the performance of acts of worship. You see, if you feel that you are struggling, you are forcing yourself all the time, shaitan will come and work on you. This is understood to make you feel burdened by the uh, acts of worship. But if this is continuous, every time you want to do something, then that's a serious, dangerous sign. Repenting, sincere repentance. And one of the conditions we've always repeated of, of, of repentance being sound and accepted is that one abandons the sin. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullahu wa radiyallahu anhu at the end of Ramadan he used to send letters to those who were whom he appointed as heads of states instructing them to make people utter istighfar all the time after the end of Ramadan and spend charity. Why? In hope that Allah Azza wa accepts the deeds. You see, istighfar, uttering istighfar is something we do a lot after different acts of worship, after different deeds. 
After we conclude salah, the daily prayers, the first thing we say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. After hajj, after we finish from Arafah, go on to Muzdarifah, thumma afidu min haythu afadha nas, wa astaghfirullah, and ask forgiveness from Allah. When you're sitting in a gathering and you want to conclude, you say the master of istighfar as a conclusion. So uttering istighfar is very important after the end of Ramadan in hope that Allah Azza wa Jal accepts our deeds. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan ended. And Ramadan signifies our life cycle and how fast this worldly life is. And it starts and before you know it, it's ended. It's a training process to remind us that this life is going to come to an end. And that death is going to reach every one of us without taking permission, without warnings. And that one does not know where or when his life will end. Ya ayyuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum wakhshaw yawman la yajizi walidun an waladih wala mawludun huwa jazin an walidihi shay'a inna wa'da allahi haqq fala taghurrannakum al hayatu al dunya wala yaghurrannakum billahi al gharur O people fear your lord Ya ayyuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum wa akhshaw yawma and fear a day during that day a father will not avail his child and the child will not avail his father no benefit no exchanged benefit on that day indeed the promise of Allah is true so do not be deceived by this worldly life. And not, let nothing deceive you from obeying Allah Azza wa Jal. So let us prepare for that day. A wise person is he or she who knows that there is a danger ahead in his path and prepares a good plan to go around it and to counter it and to face it and to deal with it in a manner that will not harm him and that will make him go beyond it safe and sound. Well, this danger that is ahead of every one of us that comes after death is whether or not we're going to go to Jannah. Whether or not we'll be admitted to Jannah. We don't know if we're deserving of the wrath of Allah and the punishment of Allah. So we need to work and we need to work hard. And we need to continuously and continuously and perpetually obey Allah. I ask Allah Azza wa to enable us all to please Allah Azza wa Jal and to maintain the spirit of Ramadan throughout the remaining part of the year and the remaining part of our lives. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-qabool. Allahumma inna nas'aluka an taj'alana mimman a'taqtahum fi Ramadan.